Welcome back. So now we know how our model should look. It should be some kind of product with two properties right now, a name and an ID. Uh, now we could just start writing it directly inside the core because that's where it belongs. But instead we're going to do a test driven just to kind of get you guys into test driven development right away. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new solution folder. Now solution folders is pretty much just a way for us to actually explain to the system or the solution that I want to map some projects together. Now the solution folder is not going to be in the explorer or anything. It's just a solution that knows how things belong together. So we're going to make one called onion core test. And in that one, I'm going to have two different test projects. I'm going to have one for the core and the domain later on. So let's start by making the first project for the core right here. I'll say new project under onion core test. It's going to be a unit test project. So I'll call it Inotech Legos for Life core.test. So it matches the name we have here, except it has test in the end. And then also I want to call the type is going to be X unit, not N unit or MS test. I'm going to use X unit. The other ones are fine and you can go and use those if you want, but I'm going to pick X unit because that's the one I'm most familiar with. I'm going to choose C sharp and .NET 5, of course. So let's just create this new project. There we go. Out of the box, you're going to get one test right away. So let's try and actually right click this guy and just run the unit test and see what happens. It launches the test and it'll be successful because this fact right here, which is the way for action to explain here's a test that's being executed, is doing nothing. So it'll just return true. There's no asserts in here. If I want to test that it actually also fails, I could do an assert true and actually set it to false. This way it should fail. It should give me an, an error right here and just restart the test. You can also right click again and say run unit test and now you'll see the assertion fails. So at least the unit testing is working. So let's start actually testing our own system right now. So I'll create my very first test right here. And what do I want to test? I want to test the product class. So I start by putting in the name product, which is the class I want to test. So I put in the production name for the class and then I ended with test in the end to explain this is the test class to match the production class. I'll add this class, add it to Git. And the first thing I want to do is to try to add a fact right here. Um, if you don't get the fact, you can just import X unit right here manually and you'll get that fact up here. I want to make it a public void method right here. That's how easy it is to write a test. And what do I want to test? Let's just test that product can be initialized like this. That's all we're testing right here, just that we can call the new keyword uh, in our product right here. But already we have to do a few things in order to do that. First of all, we need to know there should be a product, right? We need a product class somewhere equals new product. And it helps me to autocomplete, but there's no product class anywhere yet. So we need to figure that one out. So what I can do right here is just try to run this unit test now and see what happens. And, and luckily it fails right here because the product doesn't exist. So I cannot even run the unit test right now. We have to fix that. Now, how do we fix it? Well, we can start by just creating the type product right here. Now we have a public class product inside the test environment. And actually now the unit test will actually run. So the final thing I just want to test is I'm just going to do an assert right here and I can say not null, meaning that this shouldn't be null after I've initialized it, of course. And let's just try and run this now. And hopefully using the unit test right here, you can see that this is actually green now. So let's run the unit test. There we go. So now we have this green. Now the other one will fail. Let's actually get rid of it so it doesn't pollute our information. So I'll just delete the old one. There we go. So now writing minimum amount of code, we've just tested our first unit test right here, test driven. I've created a product, but I'm not done yet. Now I need to do a bit of refactoring. I want this product class not to be here because this is actually production code. I want it to be put up here. Now we can luckily do that very easily. I can just right click and I can actually say refactor. I can say move because I want to move it to another folder. So I'll move to folder and I want to put it in another folder right here called core test. Instead of test, it'll say core and here it'll say core. So I want to put it into this folder up here, right? And um, I wanted to put it in a class of a separate file and I want to just put it up there right now. So I'll say next and hopefully it'll move it now. I'll just say next and it's gone from here. It's gone now. The product is still here. If I go up to this area, you'll see now it's available up here. And that means I need a reference to this new project. So I'll right click add reference and add that core reference right there. And the final thing I need is to import it and we're actually good to go. So that's again how we move things from one place to another. There is one thing that's still not how I want it. And if you notice, it still looks like it's in the test folder up here in the namespace. What you can do, which is pretty neat, you can just say refactor up here as well. And you can say adjust namespace 
and it'll take the namespace and put it into the folder where it belongs to. So I'll do next right here and boom, now it's in core. So let's just rerun the unit tests. See that everything is still running as expected. The unit test is still running, but there's one more thing I want to change before we actually end this. I want to add this new directory up here called models because I don't want the models to be put in the root of the core. So I'll put this inside the models now. And then again, I'll right click and I'll say refactor and I'll adjust the namespace like this for this folder. And then if I open it now, you'll see it's under core models like this. I'll go back to the test. And uh, I also want to do the same down here because when you move one thing, you want to move them both. So I'll make one models down here as well. Again, it's important that these guys look the same. So it's easy to navigate throughout your system and find whatever you're looking for. So let's just put the models here and put the product test in here as well. Boink. So now they kind of look the same again. So I can easily find the one I'm testing. And what we're going to do again is here, let's just right click and say refactor this as well. And let's just say adjust namespace. There we go. And now it's the same namespace with models in the end. Sweet. And just one final thing to make sure that everything is still running. We'll just run the unit test again. So we did failing tests, successful test, refactoring. And we started again just to make sure that everything is still running. And there we go. Now we have the first part of our testing system up and running. I'll commit this to Git and we can continue. See you next time. Bye.